Good afternoon all. I trust everyone is safe and well. Welcome to the eighth week of our Civil Designer Open Classroom webinar series. We have had a number of new registrations since Friday's webinar. So, if today is your first open class and you wish to, to view any of our past 27 webinars, they are posted on our website www.civildesigner.com in the services section under FAQ videos. Today's open class will be hosted by Andrew Cole, who will be working in the survey and terrain module. As always, please feel free to use the text chat service on your GoToWebinar floating dialog to ask us any questions you may have during Andrew's presentation. So, good afternoon, Andrew. Please take it away. Good day and welcome to today's Survey and Terrain webinar. In today's webinar, we'll be looking at the terrain drainage functions. The terrain drainage functions allow you to calculate dominant water routes and catchment areas on your site. So I'm going to be working with this um, East Mall site of ours and we're going to be calculating some dominant water routes and some catchment areas. Okay, so I'm just going to escape out of this render view of our site, the height shaded render view, and then I'm going to go just set a pen for my water route and I'm going to the drain pull down menu to drainage. Okay, so these are the drainage functions, the water drop, and then you've got the flow direction and drainage network. So those two do both the water route, dominant water route, and catchment area calculations for you. But to start with, I'm just going to use the water drop. So that would just work on your triangulated site. You can output a CAD polyline or a terrain string. I'm going to use the terrain string for this example, just calling it water drop. It will ask you for your start point for this water course. So I'm just going to click up top here. You can see the contours of our site. And the water is running down this route, down into this flatter area at the bottom there. The function repeats, so I could add another one if I wanted to. So I'm just adding water drop 2. So you can add as many water drops as you like to your terrain surface. And just over this crest here, I'm going to add another flow direction or water drop route. Okay, the nice thing is it works out your levels and coordinates. So at the start point, where you click initially and then the end point, it'll work out the coordinate and elevation. You also have the maximum minimum gradient and average gradient and length along that water drop route. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how the program then works out the water route. Um, to do that I'm going to go to display settings and just switch off my height shading. So just unchecking the height shading and then I'd like to use the slope shading function switching slope shading on and I'm not using the colors but I'm only going to use the arrows so I want to use that slope shading arrows just to show you how the program then works out where the lowest point along that route is and where the water would run along that site of ours that DTM surface so the slope shading arrows directions are based on the heights at every corner of the triangles in your DTM surface. So it's a weighted average of each triangle. So I'm changing to this copy of our Eastmore project just to show you the water route in, in a 3D format. So I'm just going to go right click to our render view, the CAD render view. And I've got some predefined views that I've saved. So that's the view from side on of that main water route, water drop route. That's the view from the top looking down towards the bottom and this is the view from the bottom the water running down. I've also prepared a fly through. Um, you can see it's following that water drop polyline and then I've got a height above, a sight distance and a speed that I want to run the fly through. A little bit of a roller coaster ride in the beginning, but 
smooths out lower down but you can see the arrows so that's my main point here is to show you how the direction arrows slope shading arrows sort of guide the water drop path and you can see this is where the program gets to a point where it can't go any further and then it terminates that water drop route so now the, the terrain is climbing again okay so I'm gonna leave the render view escape out of the render view and I'm going back to my main project back to display settings just to switch off that slope shading the arrows okay maybe just switch off the triangulation as well so what I want to do next is this has been created so our water drop route is created as a terrain string so under the string operations if you go right click string operations string long section you can actually view your your string long section remember in this case our string is actually draped on the DTM surface so if you had terrain platform strings you could view the ground or other strings in relation to the string you can actually also click and view the elevations of your string as well so at any stage of the terrain string you can look at that string long section it is available under the strings pull down menu as well I'm just going to go plot generate and in this case I just want to show you we have got a, a new relatively new terrain string long section sheet file so you can make use of that terrain string long section sheet file to plot your terrain strings you can select which strings you would like to work or which you want to plot in your plot routine you've got all your various um, lines or strings and surfaces that you want to have visible in this case it's draped on the ground so it's just my first string that I want to view along with the chain edges Okay, so it's just my main water drop string levels that I'll be viewing. Okay, so that terrain string long section routine or the sheet file is quite useful. Okay, so next up I'd like to show you the flow direction, the drainage flow direction function. So I'm going to go right click on my current layer window to add a few additional layers. So I'm adding a water course layer and I'm adding a catchment area layer. We're going to use these layers to output the the data, the water course and the catchment area to a CAD layer. Okay, so I made water course my current layer. I just want to switch off the water drop roots, which was in that CAD rectangles layer. Okay, so we're going to run that terrain drainage flow direction function now so the flow direction is similar works out a dominant water route and a catchment area but it is reliant on a DTM grid okay so we need to run DTM grid volumes to generate a DTM grid so DTM grid volumes this is going to create a, a grid or drape a, a grid of points across our whole DTM site. So I'm setting a 5 meter interval. There would be 40 by 40 grids across each of those big blocks, calling it catchment. That's just a search distance to interpolate from your points and then your lowest level, the datum, be the lowest level on your site. Okay, so you can see there it's generating our grid, it's draping that over the, the whole terrain surface. So we run the DTM grid volumes function so we will get some DTM volumes but we're not concerned with that for this particular exercise. Um, next up I'm going to be running that terrain drainage flow direction function. It's going to ask me to use the grid that we've just generated and we want to output this information to CAD layers. So I've just changed the pen. I'm going to select the water course CAD layer that I just created and that's for the dominant water route and then my catchment area that it's going to work out for me I'm going to output to the catchment area CAD layer. 
Okay, then it's going to prompt me for a start point, so the high point for this water course. And you can see it's put in the water course and it's calculated the catchment area. So once again, start and end elevation, the length, the average gradient, but most importantly, it's worked out that whole catchment area, which would be very useful if you're working out um, or designing a culvert for a road. Okay. I've just hit spacebar. I'm just going to do another catchment area over the crest over here. You can see once again it's worked out the dominant water route and the catchment area. We can maybe just have a look at those slope shading arrows just to show you how the program has worked out these catchment areas. So the flow direction works out on or works according to those grid blocks. Okay, you can see there's the average gradient and the catchment area again. So everything based on the grid that's draped onto the surface and the water that runs off those grids. Okay, I'm just going to switch off that slope shading. Okay, and then I need to add a few layers. So I want to add two new layers for the drainage network water course and for the drainage network catchment area. We can switch off the flow direction CAD layers. I've just made the DN water course my current layer. So the, the drainage network function would also then work on the grid, the DTM grid that we've generated or draped over our site. So it's drainage, drainage network. It's prompting me to use that same grid file. And yes, we do want to use this. Okay, so this now is the number of grid blocks that you want the program to consider to generate uh, water courses. So it's looking at the whole site and it's going to generate um, water courses for the whole site based on the number of grid blocks you specify at the top there. So the smaller the number of grid blocks, the more routes you'll have. So make a little bit bigger to spread them out. We're also going to be showing our catchment areas. It works a little bit differently to the flow direction. So it's going to first give us the dominant water routes based on the 40 grid blocks that are specified for the whole site. So those are all the dominant water routes. And then to pick up the catchment area, you click at an outlet point. You might need to click once or twice so that it picks up all those grid blocks um, that are contributing to that outlet point. So it's a little bit different to flow direction. In this case, you're giving an outlet point. So where your culvert would be positioned, for example, and then it's giving you the catchment area that contributes to that point. We don't actually work out the area. Um, automatically because obviously it varies from where you click so you could always use polygon area for example to to work that out i just wanted to show you i'm just running it again and i'm going to use a slightly different factor to generate the water courses for the whole site so i'm reducing it to 20 so we should see more blue dominant water routes I'm not outputting it to CAD, so it'll disappear once I refresh the site. But you can see it's included some additional water routes now. There's more blue lines. So if you specify a smaller number of grid blocks, the program looks at many smaller areas across the whole DTM surface and generates more dominant water routes for this drainage network function. So try different factors depending on how many routes you would like to see across your site. Next up, I would like to calculate the area for the catchment we've just defined. So I'm going to be using the model polygon area function. Okay, I'm just going to snap to all these corner points just to work out this catchment area roughly. Just a bit quicker on this side. And right click finish okay and then in the output window you'll have that catchment area in square meters 
So I trust that you'll find these drainage functions very useful. And that's all I have time for today. Cheers. Thank you, Andrew. That was great. And thank you to all who attended today. See you tomorrow at the same time and place using the same link when Cameron will be covering road intersection design and verification. Have a great afternoon and goodbye for now.